bow, 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 bow. It's black in the morning. Makes you bright and shine. Bow, 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 bow. It's black in the morning. Well, it makes you feel so fine. Woo! Good morning. Who is Monsieur that? Blackie. Bonjourno. Bonjourno. Who, who was that? Giuseppe here. Giuseppe, okay, Giuseppe. Now, you know how we play the game? Uh, I try, I try. I, uh, I like to listen to the radio. It's very nice. Yeah. But uh, I don't speak very English, so you have to talk very slowly. All right, I will talk very, very slowly to you, Giuseppe. Thank how you. long have you been in New Zealand? Uh, I just arrived from Italy, been here four days. And for four days? Four days I've been here. I love this country, it's a beautiful country. Okay, Giuseppe, we're going to make it a little richer for you, too. We're going to give you and try and give you one million dollars oh, in, in, oh, in trivial pursuit. You just listen to me, Giuseppe. I'll oh. do it very slowly for you. Will you pass oh, me the you. card, please? Thank okay. You. Now, the question is, in mythology, who was half man and half beast? Giuseppe? Oh, it's very hard. Can I think for a little while? Okay, Giuseppe, you just take your time. There's one million dollars here. Okay. Oh. What I will do is play another song, and then we'll come back for the answer to that question in mythology, who is half man and half beast. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> now, look, we've got one million dollars. Do you want that question again? Oh, yes, yes, please, yeah, I want to win the million dollars. Okay, for one a million dollars, Giuseppe. Oh. Do you know the answer to the question? Yeah. In mythology, who was half man and half beast? I think it's the Buffalo Bill. Yes. Hiya, Peter, good morning. How are you? I'm okay. Listen, mother's just had some automatic doors put on their basement downstairs. The one with the remote control um, that you can carry around. You push a button and they go up and down. Not a roller door, it's one of those, those ones that flip up and down. Yeah, it's an over door, that's right. Yep. I was wondering if she, she's really wrapped in them. Um, she's been showing off to the neighbours and everything how they work. Yeah. I was wondering if you could just have her on about them. Hello? Oh, yes, good morning. Um, is that Mrs. Cook? Yes. Oh, Mrs. Cook, my name is Captain Roger Hawkins of Air Control Operations. Yes. Um, you're living in, in Woolfield Road, aren't yes. you? Well, look, um, the reason for calling, we have had our RTF vehicles in the area. Yes. Have you recently um, installed any appliance that requires a remote control operation? Yes. Uh, what, what, what kind of appliance was uh, that? A, an automatic door. An automatic door? Yes. Um, we're trying to locate uh, a problem. When the remote is actually used, um, we have trouble with um, aircraft undercarriages. Is that true? Yeah, that's absolutely true. Isn't that amazing? Would, what could I do about that to help you all? Well, look, um, I, I've got Air Force One at the moment. We're making passes over the area. Yes. Um, this is one way that we can isolate the problem because yes. what we'll have to do is send around one of our engineers yes. uh, to fine-tune the frequency. Yes. Um, do you have the remote handy at all, yes, Mrs. Cook? I've got it in my hand. You've got it in your hand? Yes. Look, can I ask you, I have Air Force One. Stand by, Air Force One. Okay, if you'll bring left turn now into Woolfield Road. Now, Mrs. Cook, can I just ask you to point your remote at the ceiling? At the ceiling, yes. And turn it on. All right, inside the house. Inside the house, Okay, yes. and just keep my finger on it. Just keep your finger on it, and I will then make contact with Air Force One and okay. see what's happening. Leave it on all the time, even just, though the door's open. Just leave it on, even though the door is open. <laughs> Uh, hang on. Yes, are you there, Mrs. Yes. Cook? Yes, um, in actual fact, what you've done now uh, with Air Force One is you've brought down <laughs> its undercarriage. Oh. Okay, Mrs. Cook, can yes. you now take your finger off the button and point the remote at the floor? I've got closer to the front door. I've got the front door open. You've got the front door open. Mm. I okay. forgot my finger on it. Still got your <laughs> finger on it. 10 degree flap. Um, well, we do have a problem there, Mrs. Okay, Cook. Well, what will I do? Um, I not use it. Do I bring these into you? The little hand things, or is it the actual door control? Um, <laughs> no, I tell you what you can do. Yes. Um, you can play with them as much as you like. You've just been on the can of phone here at Radio Hauraki. Uh, Roger, this is Cook, over. 
it was your naughty son who sent us in the letter, Mrs. Cook. Um, in actual fact, it was Peter. And uh, he told us about your new remote... Wait. <laughs> I'm going to kill him at the door. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. He's still going to listen to Haraki despite what we've... Yes. Oh, good. Luck. We love you. I thought that was very clever. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Yeah, it's Alan Pearson here. Yeah, hi, Alan. How are you this morning? Yes, Kevin. Good. Um, I think I've got a candidate for you for your candid, candid phone. Yeah. Just recently, our credit controller, our Brian Stevens... Yes. ...had a phone call from a customer. Yeah. And he usually left the phone off the hook and then forgot it was there and then proceeded to tell three of us in the room about a bluish video he'd seen that night. Ah. Uh, <laughs> After going through the uh, some of the details of it, he suddenly realised what had happened, became most embarrassed, couldn't speak to the customer, so he had to go for a walk outside of the office for a while, came back and uh, after calming down, proceeded to finish his call with the customer. OK, don't tell us what the bluish movie was about because this is a family show. Stay on the line there and um, we'll come and talk to him, we'll get some details about it and then we'll make the call, huh? All right, that'll be fine. OK, thanks for calling. OK, Kevin. Oh, yes, good morning. I'd like to speak um, with your credit controller, Mr. Brian Stevens, yes, please. Yes, one moment, please. Thank you. Hello. Oh, yes, good morning. Is that Mr. Stevens? Yes, speaking. Yes. Um, this is Roland Fletcher here from the Regional Engineer's Office at the Post Office. I handle complaints. Um, we have a complaint of an obscene phone call. Uh, nothing serious at the moment. Mr. Stevens, but uh, we've just got to follow up this complaint. I assume that a phone was left off the hook. Is that correct? Was left off the hook? Well, apparently, um, there was a conversation that was going on in a room where the telephone was located, um, where somebody was proceeding to tell those in the room about a bluish movie. Yes. It was just the fact that um, the phone had been left off the Oh, hook. I see, I see. And somebody, and uh, I see what you mean, yes. And somebody was actually talking on the phone at that time, were they? Or something like that, yeah. Well, that's, uh, <laughs> that's a bit, it could be on the cards, too. I suppose somebody could talk if the phone was off the hook, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, what do they want us to do about it? Uh, make some sort of apology to the person who's listening or something, do they, or what? Well, no, you see, no. what has happened, um, it now gets complicated in terms of engineering. Yes. Um, that particular line yeah. at the time was rerouted on a conference line oh, yes. mm -hmm. that was being used by the Anglican Synod. By the Anglican Synod? Goodness gracious, it's getting complicated. It is, it's getting mm -hmm. worse actually. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot that we can do about it, yes. except um, that those chaps at the Anglican Synod, yes. um, they want to know what happened to the well-greased orange? And what was the name of the blue movie that was being discussed? Because they'd like to hire it for the next Synod Soiree. <laughs> Who the bloody hell is this? I would laugh like hell, Brian, because you're on the candid phone. <laughs> and <it was? laughs> On the candid phone here at Radio Hauraki. <laughs> And Alan Pearson from your from your organisation wrote in and told us all about what had happened when you left the phone off the hook. Uh, I think he's had one in the three for a very good long time, but he put one over very well. <laughs> just just have a nice day. And, Thank it, you, and all the best. What did happen to the well-greased orange, by the way? <laughs> it got peeled. <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk about blue movies when the phone's off the hook. <laughs> All the best. Okay, have a nice day. Bye. Bye. Hello? Yes, Good afternoon, I'll be at this front. Is that a lovely lawyer? Yes. Yes, this is Bevan Clack here. Yes. I, I've applied for the job as the waiter. Mm hmm. Please. Where can I. Where can I. I I'm a bit nervous about calling you, you see. Oh, I see. How much would I get, and where can I start? You see, I've been I've been practicing. You've been practicing, like. Have you had I've any experience at all? Uh, I used to collect glasses down at the Bridgeway Tavern, but I I think it's now time for me to move on into. Halt. What's your telephone? I'll give you. 
I've got a tray here uh, with a gin and tonic mm -hmm. and a bourbon and cock and two style lockers. Now I hold the tray above my head like that. And you see that on the telephone? Now I walk around like that. Ah! Oh, oh. Are you there? Sorry! Look, I, I, I dropped the tray. Um, they're looking for someone that's had previous um, waiting experience. Well, they must need somebody whose hand doesn't shake. Uh, well, I, I don't know about that, but they're wanting someone that's experienced with food, food and wine service. Um, have you had any experience with food at all? I had a hamburger last night. No, I think I'm um, talking about serving food. Oh, oh, well, look, we'll try that again. Serving food, yeah. Oh, all right, I'll get the tray. I'll pick the tray up off the floor. Put some food on. I'll put, I'll put some rice and dyed bread. Are you I can't do it too good with soup yet. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I dropped the tray again. Okay, look, I, th I think we're better, um, I think you're not really suitable for the job. No? Oh. Looking for someone that's had food and wine experience. They're going to send me back to the Brisbane Tavern. <laughs> I think so. Look, thank you very much for calling anyway. Oh, Mrs. Oblio, please give me the job. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not Mrs. Oblio. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Hello, is that General Store? Mm. Hello there. Hello. Is that General Store? Yeah. Gosh, General, your voice has changed. <laughs> oh, yes, there's no discrimination nowadays. Good, good. Look, I'm glad I got through to you. It's Walkwell Hughes here, Captain Walkwell Hughes of the Brunei Expeditionary Force, retired. Yeah. VDBO and Bar. Now, look, it's about those gherkins over here on the barrier. Damn it! Up they come up the beach in those little amphibious thingies, running all over the gladiola. No, hmm? It is general store, isn't it? Because I I knew your brother. Tristina General Store. Yes, well I knew your brother, Lieutenant Corner Store. I knew your brother, Lieutenant Corner Store. General store shop. Is it hyphenated? It's a shop. <laughs> that's it. Tarsina General Store. S-T-O-R-E. Oh, S-T-O-R-E. Yes, that's the one. That's General Store. That's who I wish to speak to. Look, it's about these exercises and things. Oh, I, oh. The gherkins. Gherkins? Yes, little brown and, 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 and green things. They're running all over my property. I'm over here at the barrier too, you know. Oh. Yes, you don't have to shout. I can hear you. Oh, you just leave so far away. And, and you've got these little brown men running all over your place. Yes, you? all over the gladiola. Oh, dear. And amphibious things. And they've got guns and everything. Oh. You are General Store, aren't you? Yes. Yes. Trifina. General Trifina now. <laughs> no, I'm down in Trifina. Oh. I, I think we've got the, uh, something's got a bit mixed up here. Well, look, is your brother there, Sergeant Cool Store? <laughs> Oh, General Shop. It's General Shop. <laughs> oh, it's the like... shop at Trifina you're talking to. Oh. <laughs> They've got you through to the wrong number. What an awful mix-up. What with the gherkins coming ashore and the little amphibious thingies, carrying guns and walking all over the gladiola, eh? <laughs> Damn it. Oh. Well, look, Lieutenant Corner Store's not there, is there? And look, the other thing, if you're the shop then, is that general shop or lieutenant shop? No, it's a general store. You know, we should buy all sorts of things. Oh, general. Yeah. Good. Look, uh, general, while you're there, is there any mail for me? No, no, this is, I'm down Trifina. Oh. Yes. Trifina, that's on the island here, isn't it? You're right down the other end, though. Oh, good. Good, as long as you know where you are. Yes, it's, it's good. It, it pays to know where you are, general. Okay. Look at that, that voice of yours, General. Oh, 
That old war wound's not playing up again, is it? No, no, no. I'm at the time of exchange. General, you sound remarkably like a girl. I am, I am. I'm not actually a general at all. Oh, what a bothersome mix-up. What? Okay, General. Okay, then. Bye-bye now. Oh, bless you, your wish. Hello? Yes, is that Tryphena? Yes. Yes, what's that? What's your name? Uh, Julie Townsend. Julie Townsend? Yeah. Good morning, Julie. Hello, can I help you? Yes, this is General Store here. Oh, hello, I've got you. <laughs> Have there been any calls for me? Yes. Saying about the army going through his gladiolas. Oh, not that nutter. Oh, yes, I had him for quite some time. Time to explain to him that I was the uh, shop. But um, it took some time. Oh, yes, he's quite frightful, isn't he? <laughs> he was at that Captain Wafwell Hughes. Yes, he did waffle on a bit. Yes, he does waffle. He war wounds, you know. Yes. They keep playing up. They sent him over to the barrier, retired him over there. His gladiol eyes. Yes. yes, a couple of our amphibious boys um, knocked them over last night. Yes, he's quite a loop, that one. Um, OK, look, Julie, don't worry about it too much. No. OK. Well, will I, if they do ring up, will I, um, will I, put, them, will I put them through to? If they do, well, if you get any more people ringing up and complaining, just refer them to Waiuru. Big pardon? To Waiuru? Waiuru. Yes. OK. OK. Well, thank you very much. That's OK. Thank, okay. thank you very much. Bye. Good morning, Teagle Poetry. Oh, yeah, good morning. Is that Teagle, the chicken people? Yes, it is. Oh, g'day. Bottle of grouse, I got hold of you this morning. My name's Bruce Bent Pine. Yes. From Have a Toka Toka, way up north. I wanted to ask you a question about your chickens. But, um, you know, how do you get your plump number sevens? Well, we don't have anything to do with that here. I can give you a number of processing plants. I see. Do you know offhand whether you feed them any hormones or steroids or anything like that? I really wouldn't know. I see. Because I've been feeding mine steroids or some hormones. Have you? Yeah. And what happened? Do you wanna do you wanna have a look? No, not really, no. You see, I'll just reach around here and I'll turn the feed on for my chickens. I'm feeding them steroids now. Are you? I can't see anything. Doesn't affect me either when you eat them. Are you sure? When you turn when you turn the drip feed off, the steroids going into the grain as it goes along the little conveyor belt and all their little heads are bopping in there, picking up all the grain with the secret steroids, the hormones. When you turn it off, see what happens. What happens? They just slow down. They become apathetic. Oh no. An apathetic chop. <laughs> and then what do you do? I just put some more hormones back into the feed and speed them up a bit. You sound like a very nice person. What's your name? It's Jill. Jill? Yes. Would you like to come up to have a toka toka up north here and put all your eggs in one basket? Oh, I'd love to. Thanks very much for your advice now about the steroids and the hormones. Okay, then. Ta-ta. Bye-bye. Yes. Good what? morning to you. How are you, Kevin? I'm I'm fine. Who's that? What's your name? Michael O'Shea. Michael O'Shea. Michael O'Shea. You know how the game is played. Yes, I, I, I've been listening. Right, Michael, for one million dollars. <laughs> Here we go now. Can you pass me the card, please? Well, I haven't got it with me. No, I've got the card here. Oh, this sorry. is where the question is written out on. It is European history, Michael. Ah, yeah. Right. For right. one million dollars, <laughs> I want to know Hitler's first name? Hitler. Hitler. You said Hitler. Hitler. You know Hitler, the guy who started the Second World uh, War. It was in all the papers. We won. Oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Okay, Michael, give it to us now. Hitler's first name. Um, uh, no, I, I know it. No, 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 no,
Ask the wife. All right, you can confer on this occasion for one million dollars. Oh, all right, oh, well, don't go away. I'll, I'll ask the wife. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll play another song. We'll come back to Michael O'Shea. Whereabouts do you live, Michael? In Green Bay. In Green Bay. Okay, we'll be right. back with you in a moment right after this song for one million dollars. All right, right. Mary, Mary, will you come here? We know it. We know the answer. I okay. Hear the answer. Now just calm down because we want to hear it very clearly. A question again from European history and trivial pursuit here at Haraki for one million dollars. What was Hitler's first name? Hitler's first name was Heil. Yeah, good morning. Who's that on the candid phone? Hi, it's Barbara speaking from Fisher and Paykel. How are you? I'm pretty good, Barbara. How are you doing down there? I'm pretty good. Okay, how can we help you? Well, we've got a certain gentleman in our office who um, is off to have an operation tomorrow. And mm -hmm. um, he's uh, actually going for a vasectomy. Ooh. And um, we're wondering if maybe you guys there could sort of um, give him a few words of... Um, uh, encouragement. Encouragement or um, advice. Barbara, have a nice weekend. We'll get on with the candid phone for you. Thanks very much. See you later. Okay. Bye. Good morning, Fish and Pagan National. May I help you? Yes. Um, good, good morning. Um, Graham Boggs, please. One moment, please, sir. Thank you. Hey there. Yes, uh, good morning. Um, Mr. Boggs, is it? Speaking. Yes, it's Dr. John Glandis here. I'm the uh, surgical consultant at the hospital board. I've just been speaking with Dr. McElroy. Oh, yes, yes. Um, Now, you're in tomorrow morning at 8.30. That's right, yes. Up at the snip of dawn, so to speak. Snip of dawn. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put it that way. <laughs> um, well, no, it, it, it's quite painless. It's a, it's a very, very easy operation. Yes. Um, in actual fact, we're taking away the cot, but we're leaving you the playpen. <laughs> That's another, <laughs> another doctor joke. You can you feel free to use them. We like our patients cheered up as much as we can. Thank you very much. Um, look, um, Graham, can I call you Graham? Sure, no problem. Look, um, one of the reasons I've called is uh, tomorrow, with, with the operation, we have some students. We also would like your permission to take video of the proceedings, the surgical oh. proceedings. Oh, yes. Um, your face would be admitted. From, uh, from any camera angles, of course. Um, yes. We have a new technique uh, from the United States of America for, uh, that has been developed in Dallas, in Texas, in actual fact. Yes. And um, we was wondering if we could gain permission uh, to use that technique. It's, um, it's very similar to the old technique, except we just use new equipment. Oh, yes? Yes. Does uh, it reduce the pain? Um, <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> absolutely painless, so to speak. <laughs> Would it be okay if um, if we use this new piece of equipment? Well, I guess uh, you know there's got to be some guinea pigs. Um, uh, the, um, are there any shortcomings with it? Uh, are there any complications that could be um, envisaged? Um, shortcomings. That was a bit yeah, unfortunate. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's when I was trying to Scared of the knife? No, it's a fear that we all have. Um, no, in actual fact, I have the uh, I have the piece of equipment here, nurse. If you could just start it up, uh, fine. There we are. Um, this piece of equipment um, that we have imported from Texas, um, of course, coupled with the video, um, I think it'll be the first in New Zealand. The Texas chainsaw vasectomy. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> oh, great. And, and, and of course, if there's any slip up, you can sue me for gland larceny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good. Three doctors are ones, aren't we? <laughs> good sense of humour. You need a sense of humour, you know, when you're working in that theatre five, six hours at a time. I'm sure you do. Yes, you've just been on the candid phone. <laughs> oh, very good. You don't believe me, do you, Graham? Yes. Yeah, Paul and uh, Barbara Todd set you up. And uh, good luck with the operation, that's all we want to say. <laughs> Uh, classic. Okay, have a good day. Thanks very much. Hey, and good luck. See ya. Okay. Bye. Bye bye. Good morning, morning, Chief. Ah, yeah, g'day. Is that the Export Institute? That's right. Yeah, hi. My name's uh, Bruce Bent Pine. Yes. From Havatoka Toka, way up north. I'm calling from up here. Yes. In the land of the waving cabbage tree. <laughs> 
as they say. <laughs> Do they? Yeah. <laughs> How's it doing down there? Fine. You sound like a grouse girl. What's your name? <laughs> My name's Jenny. Jenny? Yes. Nice to meet you. My no. name's Bruce. Bruce. Oh, yeah. Now, um, look, up here and have a take a take. I don't know. Have you been up north at all? No, I don't think I could even spell that. Yeah, it's pretty difficult. It's H A V E T O K A T O K A. Anyway, look, we're down the old rubbery dub, down the pub, okay? We've got a hotel in the town. Yes. And uh, that's uh, every Monday night, uh, a few of us jokers, uh, we've got the fine art school. Oh, yes. You know, we take our crowns along to the pub. Yes. And we were discussing, you know, that Miha thing that you guys got together? <laughs> yes. You know, the Ponga thing? Yes. Yeah, well, we were discussing that and we said, geez, 25 grand, you know, for that. Well, over a few beers and a pack of chips, uh, that came to about $5. <laughs> so far, you owe us five bucks, all right. <laughs> we're prepared now to the Export Institute in New Zealand to submit our new design. Are you interested in that? <laughs> I think you're having me on, aren't you? No, not allowed to have you on, love. <laughs> this is I'm representing the Have a Take a Take a Fine Arts School. Well, just one moment. I think I'd better put you through to Susan McCleary, the executive officer. Oh, all right. I'm then. sure she'd like to speak to you. Okay. Just one moment. Look, okay. okay. Hello, Susan McCleary. Yeah, g'day. Is that Susan? Yes. Yeah, hi. It's Bruce Ben Pine here from Have a Taker Taker. Yes. Yeah, look, I was telling you, I was explaining to Jenny, she's a nice girl, isn't she's she? She's lovely. I wonder if she'd like to marry a farmer, Joker. Oh, I'm sure she would. She would? Oh, almost certainly. I'll send you a photo. Oh, grouse. <laughs> okay, just send it to the Have a Taker Taker Hotel. I pick up most of my mail there. And uh -huh. talking about the Have a Taker Taker Hotel, I was explaining to Jenny, uh, the boys, we meet there every Monday night with our crayons for the fine arts school. Yes. And um, we've come up with a new design. Fantastic. Okay, now we've taken two symbols of our fine great country, uh, one from the agrarian sector, we've taken the sheep. Yes. Okay, now we've got millions of them, as you know, and uh, we've taken that other well-recognised symbol, the kiwi. Right. Now, listen, I, you can't see it, but you've got to try and imagine it, okay? Um, I'm prepared now to submit my uh, stimulating design of the kiwi here, uh, crossed with the sheep. Right. And we've got, do um, you know what we've got? A shiwi. No, we've got a ram with a big pecker. <laughs> <laughs> well, someone at the back there thinks that's funny. <laughs> and you've just been on the radio, love. <laughs> This is Kevin Black at Radio Hauraki. Well done. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. S Susan, lovely talking with you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye.